show you how you can take data from a Google spreadsheet like this one where we've got job title, uh, age of worker, if they're female, male, um, and then who contributed to generating these, this data. Um, in this sheet here, we're going to show you how to display that on two different screens in Thunkable. Um, it's going to look something like this where we're going to see the job title and then the age range. When you click on one of those items, it's going to take you to a second screen where it's going to show you more detailed information uh, about that job in the age range and the salary. So let's figure out how to do it. Here in Thunkable, I'm going to create a new app and I'll just call it um, Job Titles 2 and I'll put it under the category um, Just Testing. And I'm going to make sure I don't check this box and I'm going to say create. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and find my data list viewer that lets me uh, grab data from a spreadsheet and, um, and display it here. So we need to click on that data list viewer and add a data source. Now I've already set up the data source. It's called copy of job title. So I'm just going to click that. Over here, we need to tell it, uh, we, you know, what do we want it to look like? So it's going to have a title and a subtitle. So the title is going to be the job title. It's going to get that directly from this column here in my spreadsheet. And then uh, the subtitle will be the age of the worker. So when I preview that, it looks something. It looks nothing like it looks like this there we go so it's pulling that data you can see it's pulling it right from here prep cook and then age ranges just like that all right so that's easy that's screen one in screen two we are going to display the more detailed information about that specific thing that they've clicked on so if they click on prep cook age 22 uh, sorry 18 to 22 it's going to show us the salary for uh, male, female, and then who's contributed to the data. So let's do that. Here we are on screen two. I'm going to use um, columns and rows to do this. Uh, it helps me sort of separate my data. So let's get some rows to start with. Um, so I'm just going to say row and we need, uh, it depends exactly how we want to split it up, but I'm going to split it up into five different rows. I'm just going to drop some rows in here. You'll notice uh, it's actually easier to drop them up here. Um, if I try to drop it here, a, a row will go inside row two, but I want them stacked one, two, three like this, four and five. So I've got five rows. Um, in row one, let's go ahead and add a label. And that's going to be where we, you know, have the job title that we're looking at here. So I'm going to call this label, uh, label job title. And I'll put the text that appears in the box. I'll just say job title for now. And because this is a title, maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. All right. So what do we want in our second box? Well, we need... Uh, to know um, what age range we're looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and add some columns actually to this row. So I'll split it into two columns. So I've dropped column one in there and I'll drop column two up here. That creates two columns. In column one, let's throw another label. And this label is there um, just to say, you know, age put a colon, or sorry, this is the label name, label, uh, label, title, age, I'll call it. And in the text, we just need it to say age with a colon. Now this is going to float sort of randomly in the middle of the box. I'm going to do some formatting stuff here. I'm going to click on my column, I think. No, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to say, what do I want to do with it? I want it to fill the container. Oh, that's the height. I want to fill the container in the width department. So fill container. And I want to align my text onto the right hand side. So where do I do that? Uh, maybe up higher. Text align. Let's make it stick to the right hand side. There we go. Uh, on this side in column two, we're going to drop another label. That's where we're going to put the, the data. So let's go up here 
And uh, I called my last one a label title age. Let's just call this label age. So title age means it's a title saying the word age. And then the other one is where the actual age goes. So, and again, we're going to go under width, say fill the container. And, and this one's already left justified so that it'll say age. And then, boom, the age will be right beside it. So there's our first column all set up. Let's set up the next one uh, where salary data will go. Uh, so again, uh, let's split it into two columns just for layout efficiency. And let's drop that in there. There's column one. And I'm going to drop column two under here. I kind of wait till that red line goes right under the word column. There we go. Uh, OK, so we need some labels again here. Um, so if I look at my data, I can see there's salary data for female and salary data for male. So I'm going to put a title in this um, area and call it um, average salary. So let's go back here, label, drop it in, and I'll call it label, and this is going to be a title, uh, and I'll just call it sal for salary because I'm lazy. And in the text, I'll write average salary. And I'm going to make that text bold. There we go. Um, it is width, uh, it's already going to fill the container. And oops, that's the height. Sorry. Fill contents and uh, fill container with the width. It doesn't really matter in this case. All right, we need some other labels. I'll need um, a label on this side to balance out that one. Now another one under here. So let me go. Oop. I'm going to scroll up, put a label under here. And that one's going to say, uh, it's going to be a title again. It's just going to say female. And I'll change the text to say female. I'll put a colon. Let's grab another label, drop it right below that one. And I'll follow the same naming scheme. So a label, title, male. And uh, change the text, male, colon. We want these to uh, fill width of the container and justify to the right, align to the right. Same thing here. Align to the right and fill the width of the container. Okay, so now we need two more labels over here. Label and label. Okay, so this label here is actually just a, um, a space filler. So I'm just going to put a dash in it. I think you have to have some text there. Okay, but this is where our, so we're going to call this one, instead of label title female, we're going to say label female, or label salary female. And here, we'll call this one label salary male. Okay, uh, there we go. We got those two there. And uh, again, let's have them fill the width. Once we preview this, uh, it's going to look a little bit better. Okay, fill the width of the container, and then these things will all line up. But if you want to see it for sure not looking terrible, let's just do this. There we go. Now everything lines up. All right, let's make this one again fill the width of the container. Wait, sorry, what am I doing? I want a left justify, sorry. And then fill the container with, there we go. And let's put, uh, here we'll say salary female and salary male. Um, what else do we have here? Well, the percentage of people who've contributed to the survey. So again, we can go in and build that. I'm not going to show you how to do that because I've just shown you how to do that here. But I could say who has contributed. We could do it in a similar way. Who has contributed? Uh, percentage of people who contributed to the survey, and then we could have, you know, for this first one, 60% female, 40% male. It's going to be exactly the same as how we designed this box. Let's do the code. All right. So what happens at screen one? Well, 
oh, we want to be able to see the job title and um, the age range. And then when we click it, we want it to jump to the next screen and show us the details. So how do we do that? Let's go into blocks and write some code. This one's pretty simple. What we want to do is we're going to say, um, let's go under data source viewer, data list viewer, and say when data viewer list one is clicked. We want to know which row has been clicked on so that we can open up those details in the next thing. So we need a way of remembering this. So we're going to use a variable to do that. And let's initialize a variable. And I'm just going to call it row ID or row, maybe row clicked ID. We don't need to initialize it to anything here. It can be empty. But once they click here, we do need to do something with it. We're going to set its value to the row ID that was clicked. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to navigate to screen two where we're going to actually do something with that data. So this is all the code we need in our first row. Let's go on to screen, screen two. Just So screen two, when we preview it, we'll see it just says this, you know, job title, uh, age, and then label, and then average salary, female, male, and we don't have any data yet. So we need to get that data, and we'll do that with code. So I'm going to click here on blocks. And what we want to do is um, we want to do this all when the screen opens. So we go under screen two, and we just say when screen two opens, we want to get some data to put in our labels. So we have a bunch of labels here. If I look, uh, here's the job title label, and its name is cleverly named uh, label job title. The reason we've named them all meticulously is so we can find them over here. So label job title is what we are looking for. Label, or label title job. Label job title. There it is. So I'm going to click on that. And we want to set its text to something. So we'll grab this out and say set label job titles text to, not to label. We need to go get this from our data source. So here's our data source. We're going to get it, uh, get the value from our data source, which is our spreadsheet, which is called, for me anyway, copy of job titles. We're going to grab the salary and the job title. But from what row ID? Well, luckily, we've set the variable row clicked ID in the previous screen. So you just grab it from there. And let's test this out, make sure it works. So we'll go to live test. Here, oh, we're live testing screen. Wrong screen. Let's go to screen one, live test, and I'm going to click here on the age range, and boom, it loads the, the job title. To load up the rest of the information is simple. It's the same as of what we've done here. So I can literally just duplicate this whole stack of blocks, clip it in. Now, instead of changing our job title, the next thing we want to change is uh, this, the age range. So let's go here. Instead of label job title, we're going to go to uh, label uh, age, and we're going to change it from uh, salary to, um, oops, sorry, that was the sheet, uh, from job title to uh, age range or something, average male percent, age, age of worker, there it is. Okay, and this stays the same, it's the row that has been clicked, so again, let's, uh, well, I guess let's test it, make sure it works. Oh yeah. Hang on, got to go to screen one and test. Here we go. Click and prep cook. Age 18 to 22. Looks pretty cool. Uh, and so now we just do, we finish off these last two fields. And of course, there are a few more fields that you need to do. But again, I'm just going to duplicate this whole chunk. And now instead of changing age of worker, we're going to do uh, female salary. So this is going to be uh, a label sal female and duplicate. And boom. Here we go, and uh, label salary mail, and salary mail. So there we go. Let's test it again, make sure it works. I recommend testing after every change just to make sure it's working as you intended. Looks good. Now, it's possible while you're doing this, you make a goofy mistake, like instead of changing the label salary, oops, uh, mail, uh, maybe you accidentally change uh, label title salary. You know, 
so it would it would not work and it would cause an error so when you click on the age range uh oh it changed that that's correct but it changed something else and I can't even see where the error is oh here it's not doing anything it's causing a problem so then you can just go back in and fix your code salary mail and test there you go that's how you do it and it's really straightforward if you now want to do the same thing with the other two columns you can just do it the same exact way we've just done it there